Hello and welcome to the show. In today's Home Revision tutorial, we're going to keep going and we're going to go from a procedural mesh of a triangle, from procedural mesh of a quad, and we're going to actually make a three-dimensional cube through code. So you could either pick up this project right here and follow along with me or, you know, just type all the code from scratch. It's up to you. All right, so the project here is the procedural mesh through uh, and made a quad here. So the orange dot there, it's going to be a triangle mesh. And then over here where the, um, what color is that? Blue dot? It's a quad. Okay. And they only draw on the side of the points being connected in a clockwise motion. Okay, now we're going to make another mesh that we're going to have over here over this little box, and that's going to be a cube. There are some things I changed. For example, I changed the origin point from being in the center to being down here in the bottom corner. That's because things are getting more complicated with the more triangles we're going to add in. So, hmm, let's add a dot for the cube. That's a create empty, and we'll call it cube mesh. And we'll give it a color red. Red, 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 red. Oops, I just turned it to orange. Darn it. Red. Red. Okay. And we will move it into position. Reset, and then just move it over by one in the X. Okay, so you see how they are? All right. And we also have to have a little reference image. So I worked on something here. And this is our reference image. I just brought it into the project. Let me show it on the screen. Um, here we go. What is it looking so little for? Uh, hold on. Okay, so now instead of just having the, um, you know, like a triangle where I just had this, now we're going to make a cube. So instead of four vertices that we're talking about, we're going to be talking about eight. So this picture here is going to help us visualize where the points are in 3D space. The A, B, C, D are in front, the E, F, G, H are in the back, but using these eight points, we'll make a cube. Okay, so let's go ahead with the cube mesh and let's create a script for it. Create, C-sharp script, cube mesh, enter, and um, let's just take a look at the triangle mesh and the quad mesh, because what I did was I did change the origin point to be down here, so that, um, because coding is getting a little bit more complicated now, and I just realized that made it simpler if I just made the bottom corner, and then my offset is a 1, which is basically the size of the, you know, mesh being created, it's the size of 1. So on the triangle mesh, I made that a uh, constant. And the difference here in the data definition for the mesh is just this. So offset of one, basically um, this is point C right here in the bottom corner. That's zero, zero, zero. That will be the origin of the meshes that we're making for now on. All right, so the triangle, the origin is C. Even for the quad, the origin is also C for the quad, the two triangles. The origin point is C. So now for the cube, the origin is also going to be C. Now let me just open up a cube mesh thing here and get ready. Get set, go. All right, let me take those things out. And a lot of stuff um, I copy over. So let's just start off with the arrays that we're gonna have here. Let me just cop. Matter of fact, let me just copy everything I had from quad, and we'll change it. We'll change it as we go. Okay, because so far the get mesh function and the set mesh function that has been the same. And the only thing that changed really was the define mesh data from triangle to a quad. And you know what? Guess what? That's the only thing that's gonna change again too for a cube. Because get mesh, set mesh, they do the same thing, but where all our work is going to be is here in the define mesh data for a cube. So let's think how many vertices do we have for a, um, a cube? How many vertices? What's the count? So if a quad, let's see, okay, a triangle, let me just make, make our thoughts out here. Okay, a triangle has three, and then a quad has six. Now, how many quads, how many sides are there to a cube? There's six. So a cube is going to have six times six. It's going to have 36. All right. So here, our array size is 36, 36, and 36. So the indices will go from 0 to 35 on our arrays. So that's one difference. Um, and now in the defining mesh data, this is where we have to have our other difference. All right, so um, this is six, and I guess for 36, I could just really type a lot and hope I don't make a mistake. But I think it's time now to also, for me to add some helper stuff up here at the top. So I'm gonna make a helper, a little region for some helper code. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a static class that is gonna have the definitions for all the different points, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so 
let me do that. Let, let's make a private um, static class. And it's a static class, meaning I don't have to allocate memory for it. It's just going to always be in memory, and there's always only one instance of it in the program. Or since this only exists in the class, there's only one instance of point in the class cube mesh. All right, so what am I going to put in here is I want the positions of every point a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H in 3D space. So let's keep it simple. Let's have the public static um, vector 3 for the point A. And we'll have a point that we're going to define for each of those. So let's go like this here. Copy A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. All right, so we got A, B, C, D, E, F, H, G. So um, this is 0, 0, 0. So point A is going to equal a new vector 3 of um, 0 offset to go up and 0. So the z-axis on the A, B, C, D is always going to be 0 because that's over here in the front. It's not going up in the z yet. B is going to equal new vector 3. Let's see, b is over here. If this is 0, 0, this is 1, 1. So this is offset, comma, offset, comma, 0. And c is 0. That's the origin point. 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. And d is over here, new vector 3. And that would be 0 on the x. Oh, no, actually, that's offset on the x, 0 on the y, 0 on the z. OK. And let's line these up so it's easier to read them. So let me just add some spaces here and just line everything up nicely. Because, you know, you could add spaces in C-sharp, and C-sharp still knows what you're talking about. All right, now for the points behind, EF, uh, but what's that back there? EFGH, EFHG, let's, EFGH. Just keep everything in the same order. So I think that EF. Uh, G, H, they should all be the same as these guys, except that the offset for Z is back there. I add 1. So E is going to equal new vector 3, 0, offset, offset. Haha, <laughs> see? The Z is back there. And then for F, it's going to equal new vector 3, um, offset, offset, offset. It's the furthest point from our origin. Oofset. And then g uh, equals new vector 3. It will be 0, 0, comma, offset, because it's in the back. And then h equals new vector 3. What happened there? New vector, vector 3. Yeah, what's going on? Somehow this jumped in here. OK, sometimes Visual Studio 2019 adding using statements, uh, it could be annoying because it just added that, but I didn't want that. All right, so H is like D, but back there. So it's 0, no, it's offset, comma, 0, comma, offset. Bam. All right, now that I have everything in there, let me just line it up. Line it up, everybody. Get in line. Woohoo! line up, mister. All right, so these are the points of our cube, and I just have a class there so that I could just talk about the points of our cube. So now we have to make six sides, or six quads, you know, uh, front, back, left, right, top, bottom. So also, let's, let's, make a, let's make an enum, all right? So we don't have to talk about it in a difficult way. We could just say the enum for a side that we want to get the, the quad that we have to make. So I'll make an enum quad, and here I'm just going to add in this. I'm going to cheat. Just going to pop the code in here. Boop. All right. So one, I label out the points for the quad. So the first one, this is called the back because Z is pointing forward. So this face that you know faces us in the camera, this is the back face. And A, B, C, D make up that quad. So that's the back face. And the back quad is the first quad. So in the indices, it's going to start at 0. So that's why I'm giving it a value of 0. And then um, from the back to the front, E, F, H, G, that's my second quad. That starts at 6. So you can see for each quad. Um, I'm giving a new value of where it is in the vertices in the arrays, and each one adds six. Okay, so these things are just going to help us keep our thoughts organized 
keep us from typing mistakes, you know, because we have to type the same thing over and over. And uh, if we do see a mistake, then it's going to be easier because, oh, if point A just seems to be off, we could just go right here, fix this point A in one spot, and the rest of our code should adjust. So that's that's nice. Those will help us write some code that's easier to read. So now in the define mesh data, what we would do, <coughs> dare, dare to erase all this here, what we would do is we would go by and we would actually try to make each um, quad, each side of the cube. And let me just put a little, where should I put it? Um, I guess I will, I'll put it over here. I'm going to put a little, con no, I'm not going to put it there. Control Z, let's put it, because it's really this whole class is about making the cube. I'll put it up here. All right, and this is just a comment, thanks to ASCII coding, that it's kind of like the representation of this drawing in the code. So. You know, I won't always have this uh, drawing with me, but if I'm using the code over and over, I'll always have this here. So I'm putting here, and the note that C is the origin, so C000. So I could refer to this picture while I'm coding it, but then later on I could refer to this comment if um, things are going wrong and I don't have that picture anymore. All right, so define mesh data. Basically what I want to do is make, I want to make uh, each quad, or I want to make each side. So um, since I'm going to be making six of those, and that's going to happen over and over again, let me make a function that says define quad to call, and then in that function, I could give it the enum quad of which side I want, you know, to make. All right. And I could go through and call all six sides to get the whole mesh created. Now, let's add down here a new function that wasn't in, in the triangle or the quad. And we'll call it define quad. Okay. So it's defined up there. And you will have to pass to it an enum quad. And we'll call that a code. You have to pass it a code of which side you want to define the data for. And this one is. It's going to be long, so let me just cut and paste it. First thing I want, though, the code is an enumeration, okay? And I want the value of the enumeration so as an integer, so I could use it as an index. So let me just do that here, int i. What? No, I don't really need that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, all right, let me write a switch statement. Switch code, okay? Based on the code you send, that is the side that I'm going to build. So case that the um, side is the back. We'll do something here, break, case, and in quad, that it is the front. Or basically, let me just copy and paste the code, save time, OK? And let me come in here and magically put the code in. All right. So these are the different um, sides of the cube that we'd make. So A, B, D, C is the back side, which is this one right here. And to make that, it's triangle ADC and ABD, OK? We connect them in a clockwise order to define which side is rendered and which side is back face cold. So ABDC back starts at 0. So here my vertices starts from 0 to 6, Not, I mean from 0 to 5. And then here, and then here. So this is two triangles it's making to make the back face. Then for the front face, um, that's basically this one back here, EFGH, except think about it. Um, if I connect it like E, H, and G, then it's going to render um, the front face that's facing me. I want it to render the front face that's facing forward. So instead of E, H, and G, I switch it around and make it um, F, uh, G, and H so that the other side gets rendered. And the same thing with the second triangle, F, E, and G. Okay, And that'll render the other side facing away from me instead of the side facing to me because that's going to be inside the cube. You don't want that side. You want the other side. And then these points for the uh, front face are from 6 to 11, OK? And one good thing is that the um, triangle indices and the UVs, they're going to stay the same. The only thing is, though, of course, the indices to the triangles and the UVs are different. But the values, they basically, the triangles will correspond to these vertices. And the UVs, their mapping is the same. So those numbers stay the same. And for each of these cases, I just have to figure out the vertices, really. All right, so that's the front. Then um, the top is up here, and it should render facing this way. So the points have to connect in a clockwise motion, um, EBA and EFB. All right, and then for here, the bottom, this one's hard to think of because if I, this is um, CH, um, GHCD, but I have to render in the opposite direction. So that's like it's um, CHG and CDH instead because I want it to render facing this way, facing down. And now we have the left and the right. Um, that is, uh, the left and the right is EAGC. Um, e so maybe I could rename this so the order is the same as the others. 
E A G C. I'm using the reading functionality again. All right, so um, going down, we have to make sure that it renders the bottom side. So, oh no, going to the left. So I have E C G and E A C. That's easy. And for the right, F B H D. F B H D. Um, we have B. DH, we're going around this way, so it renders out this way, clockwise this way, and BFH, and I'm not going to bother renaming that. <laughs> and that's all six sides. All right, uh, let's see what else. So if, if this makes all the sides, the define quad, then in our define mesh data, we just have to call to define each side. So I could go on and type a define quad for each of the quads here or I will show you another trick, and we could enumerate through all the quads. We could loop through each of these enum quads, okay? Now, the way to loop through the enum quads is like this. We're gonna use a for each loop, all right? And the type of variable is an enum quad, which we'll just leave it as a code. And we're gonna loop through a get the values for our enum, which is a type of enum quad. Okay? So that's going to loop through each of our enum quad values. We'll go one, two, three, four, da, da, da. We'll go through the list. Okay, so for each one of those, we just want to call define quad, and we'll pass it the code. There. That's simple. It's so simple. Now let's try it out. <laughs> We're talking about all this simplicity and everything. So let's see the cube mesh. Um, let's add the script to it. Boom. And yeah, it wants the material because in our script here, we asked, uh, where is it? See, we have the public material, so it knows what to draw. So, you know, let's just keep using our bear. Hello, bear. Oh, got to use the material. Hello, bear. And drag it on there. And now there's only one thing left to do, and that's press run. So I'm going to press run on the game. And there we go. We have our triangle. We have our quad from the other two tutorials. And we have the cube. Now let me go to scene view so we could, like, look around and make sure that all the faces of the cube are drawn. Good. And you see the bottom? Good. This side? And this side, so the cube is drawn. And that's the end of this tutorial. Next tutorial, we're going to have to draw um, bunches of cubes. You know, little by little, we're going to get more and more until we're going to have a whole terrain that we're going to produce. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.